chelation is not complicated. It's a very simple idea of how to improve your health and how to improve your circulation. And so by the time we're done, I, I'm going to try to get that idea across to you. Now, I want to point out one interesting thing is that we humans have two brains. <clears throat> Sometimes my wife thinks I don't have quite that many, but, uh, but we have a left brain and a right brain, and they function a little bit differently. The, 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 the right brain is more holistic. It kind of sees the whole picture. It's very practical, kind of is very uh, uh, visual. The left brain is very scientific, analytic, kind of wants to see the evidence, the details, the facts. The right brain is kind of getting the overview, the big picture. And what I'm going to be talking to you about today is how I think there really is two views of chelation. There's a right brain view which looks at the practical value of chelation and what it does for people. And then there's the left hand scientific view which says, okay, where's the evidence that chelation really does work to help people? And hopefully when we're done today, there'll be a kind of joining the corpus callosum of, of the presentation, which is that's the structure that joins the two brains together. And so uh, with that kind of little introduction, let's, let's kind of jump in here and talk a little bit about chelation. Chelation is a medical slash lifestyle therapy to improve general circulation. And I'm going to explain the components of this definition. It is a medical therapy. You, you, uh, there is such a thing as oral chelation. I'll, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that of that at the end. Today we're going to be focusing on intravenous chelation where you get the chelate IV but it's also done as part of a general lifestyle it's it you it's not just in and of itself getting the the uh, IV it's it's also what you do to take better care of yourself and then we're going to see how it improves your circulation and why that is a fundamental component of how chelation helps people feel better function better and very often improve the illnesses that they're dealing with. So if we stop and think about what is good circulation, it's, it has to do with your arteries. These are the little tubes that, that uh, allow blood to flow to all your organs. And when they are injured, they don't function as well. What are some things that can injure your arteries? We don't see our arteries, so we don't think about them being injured. Um, homocysteine, or as Dr. Jackson would say, homocysteine is the, uh, is the uh, molecule, yes, is the molecule that is produced if you do not have enough of some special B vitamins. It's a breakdown product of methionine, and the American diet is very rich in an amino acid called methionine, and if you don't break it down properly, you'll have a buildup of this toxic substance called homocysteine, and it will injure the lining of your arteries. Bacterial infections can injure the lining of your arteries. We now know that people who have chronic gingivitis, they're more prone to uh, coronary artery disease because the thought is, is that bacteria is leaking into your circulation and the bacteria are causing damage to your, your blood vessels. This last item here, hemodynamic stress, your heart beats a hundred thousand times a day. How many of us have thanked our heart for all the work that it's done for us throughout our lives? But a hundred thousand times a day, every time the heart beats, the first set of arteries that get the stress of the heart beating where the arteries are expanding are the carotid arteries and the coronary arteries. Well, what are the main killers here in the United States. It's heart disease, the coronary arteries, and stroke, carotid arteries, and the cerebral arteries. And so this hemodynamic stretching and stress and little tears that it causes in the arteries, these can be the source of, a, of the beginning of a, an inflammatory process that does damage to your arteries. So when those little tears occur, it's just like as if you got cut or injured on your skin. There's going to be an inflammatory response. The white blood cells are going to come in. The, the repair cells are going to come in. And if they have the right nutrients and cofactors to do the repair, everything is fine. But if they don't, that inflammation will trigger a, a whole series of problems. And 
One of the things that happens is you'll have a buildup of free radicals in the area of the injury site that causes cross linkages, which will make the arteries more stiff. So you'll start to get a buildup, a plaque buildup, a stiffening, and the arteries are not working so good. They're also becoming narrower. You're not getting enough blood through. That's why when people go in and have their arteries checked, uh, very often they'll have to have stents put in in order to open up the areas that have become narrowed. And the very worst thing that can happen is if the inflammation in this plaque buildup reaches a certain peak, the plaque can actually rupture. That will then trigger the formation of a blood clot which will block off the blood flow either to your heart or to your brain and you will have a heart attack or a stroke. So, so this can be very severe consequences and the general name for this is atherosclerotic vascular disease. Now that's just in terms of your heart. It can affect other organs as well but these are the more dramatic forms of, of vascular disease and artery problems.